a collection of Stuart engines and some other nice things. This one is part 8. In the collection that I bought recently there was a Stuart Models S50 factory machine kit. Currently it does not run very well and the flywheel is wrong. In this video I compared it to some other S50 steam engines and once again I show how to modify the worn piston to fit a silicone o-ring. So what's wrong with the flywheel? Well nothing except it is not an S50 flywheel. It doesn't bother me in the slightest because it looks quite good. The giveaway though is it's a slightly different green to the body of the engine. I do have quite a few miniature steam engines but I'm not really a collector. And I do like buying collections with things wrong with them. For instance this Grasshopper beam engine which was part of the same collection was not good at all when I first bought it. But after I made and fitted a new crankshaft, bushed the flywheel, remachined the flywheel and put it all back together, this is how the engine runs now. Here it is running in slow motion. The movement isn't fully sinusoidal, it's not even, because on the upstroke it's having to lift the weight of the beam, and on the downstroke the weight of the beam and the connecting rod increases the speed slightly. Back to the S50, it actually does run ok, but it's blowing past the piston. This S50 is a modern one with a cast iron cylinder and a gun metal piston. I loosened and moved the crosshead guide bars so I could get a spanner on the nut which locks the piston rod into the crosshead. Time to remove the cylinder cover and remove the piston. I'll shorten this sequence just to avoid any viewers inadvertently slipping into a coma. When I work on miniature steam engines some of the jobs are very slow and very tedious. Once all the bolts were removed I could remove the cylinder cover and as you can see the cylinder is definitely made from cast iron. What I'm having to do is unscrew the piston from the crosshead using a screwdriver. After doing this I temporarily refitted the crosshead guides so I didn't lose any of the small parts. I also removed the exhaust fitting which definitely did not look good. Instead I'm going to make up an exhaust pipe system using PM Research components. In my opinion these PM Research components do look good as exhaust pipes. I wouldn't really use them if I could help it for inlet piping though. Here is a cylinder once again without its piston, and here is a cylinder without its piston but fitted with a 5 8 of an inch diameter o-ring. When I bought the o-rings for this job I made a mistake, this one is a bit too thick. I should have bought some o-rings that were a bit thinner, but this will be fine. I'll just have to be more careful as I machine the groove in the piston. I'll show you that very shortly. A word about Stuart pistons for engines of this size. This is what they normally look like. It's just a gunmetal piston with oil grooves. This is fine when you first build the engine, but after running for quite a while, the thing wears out. And the solution is either to make a complete new piston or machine the existing one to take an O-ring. And the good news is, the diameter of a piston designed to use an O-ring needs to be slightly smaller than the diameter of the cylinder. Here I'm trying the o-ring in the groove to see if it's the right size. And it would appear that this is fine. To finish the job I'm using a needle file to remove any sharp edges. The next part of the job is to remove the piston and rod from the chuck, clean up the piston to remove any swarf, apply plenty of oil to the piston groove, preferably steam oil, and then insert the piston into the cylinder. Please note it should not be a tight fit. If it is a tight fit, the o-ring will prematurely wear out. The next part of the job was to reassemble the crosshead, as you can see here. Before running the engine, I thought it would be a good idea to make a temporary exhaust pipe. The thread in the exhaust hole of this particular S50 is quarter by 32 threads per inch. And here, I've temporarily fitted a PM Research exhaust system. On the older Stuart S50 steam engines, the ones that have the gunmetal cylinders, the hole for the exhaust is much smaller. Generally speaking, I would drill this out using a 7 seconds of an inch drill, which is tapping size for quarter by 32 threads per inch, and then re-thread the hole. 
I've connected the airline, it's time to see how it runs. I'm going to try a bit of an experiment. I disconnected the airline from the engine without touching the compressor and connected it to the yellow S50 that I have. The air pressure is exactly the same as it was when it was feeding the green S50, but as you can see the yellow one goes much faster. I'm going to connect the airline to another S50 and once again I haven't altered the pressure. The other two S50s are better than the newer one that I'm working on. These other two engines are not new engines at all and they run better simply because the parts are well run in. And also the valve timing on these other two S50 engines is better than on the green one. As the reason for this, apart from the fact that the green engine is tighter, it's mainly down to incorrect valve timing. And after I tweak the valve timing to allow slightly earlier admission evenly at both ends of the stroke, the engine ran like this. Here it is running in slow motion. And now it's time to run it fast to make sure nothing drops off. In this clip I'm showing whereabouts in the stroke the air has been admitted and it's just before top dead center. This cushions the reciprocating masses of the engine and therefore it runs much more smoothly. And that's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.